Hello guys, good day. So this is me, Kurt Zeus, and for today's video lecture, I'll be discussing all about introduction to global politics and governance. Now, first things first, we have to define the following terminologies, which are politics and governance. Now, first thing would now be politics. Now, politics basically analyze this thing called power. So when we define politics, it refers to the ability to control others or the capability to control others in favor for a certain goal or desire. Now, the notion natin kasi when we talk about politics, basically the first institution that will pop up in our mind would now be the government. Now, basically, tama naman yun. No? But politics or the thing that we analyze in politics, which is now power, is also present in our small groups. So, for instance, yung group of friends natin, di ba? So, in your group of friends, tendency there will be an interplay of power. So, basically, there will be politics. So, kunyari, kung saan kayo kakain, one would now propose that kakain tayo sa McDo, then another would be kakain tayo sa Jollibee, then one would be in Chowking. So, different desirabilities, different goals, different interests dun, nagkaroon nyo ng interplay of power. Either their interests, their desires would clash with one another, or one will now subject himself or submit himself towards dun sa proposal na isang tao. Now, tendency ko may cooperation, there will be, there will still be power, there will still be politics. Kasi looking into the definition of politics, guys, ha, ability to control others. You are able to manipulate the thought and the decision making of an individual. So, ganun yung notion natin ng kapangyarihan. Now, speaking about power or kapangyarihan, in your classroom, there will always be politics. Now, supposedly, sino may kapangyarihan sa loob ng classroom? It would now be the teacher. And he will, he or she will now impose yung kanyang rules and regulation dun sa mga estudyante. Now, from your small group to the classroom, now let's go to the national level, to the macro level, wherein we have the government, di ba? So, government, kitang-kita yung pagka-clash ng power, yung pagka-interplay ng ating mga interest. So, ganun yung konteksto ng politics. Now, in this subject, we also look into the interplay of power when it comes to nation states, yung mga bansa natin. So, how does Philippines interplay or connect within with China or with the United States? So, nakikita natin yung presentation ng goals ng ating, sub, ng ating mga bansa, no? So, quote-unquote, yung national interest naman yung, yung, yung pinapakita natin sa, when it comes to the clash of politics. And later, I'll be defining that one, no? Now, the second terminology would be in terms of governance. Now, governance came from, let's look into the etymology, no? came from two words. So in Greek, we have kubaneve. Then in Latin, we have gubanave, which basically means to steer or to control. Ano yung kinokontrol natin dyan, guys? Now, we in governance, we are controlling the public or the people. But basically, we control them not in the sense that we attempt to gain a certain goal na kunyari yung goal ng isang tao. No, that would now be dictatorship or authoritarian. When we talk about governance, we're controlling the public or the people in order to attain the common good. From the word government itself, di ba? Nandun yung root word na govern. Why do they need to govern? It's basically for the common interest. If you remember your social contract, di ba? Individuals or the society created this institution called the government which the individuals will now put their proposals through or rather they created this institution in order to reflect yung interest ng karamihan. Kaya nandun yung notion natin or yung phrase na common good or general welfare or the interest of the people. Yun yung function ng ating government, di ba? Or aside from the social contract, no, in Roman law or Roman philosophy, we have this legal maxim, Latin maxim called Salus Popula S Suprema Lex. The general welfare of the people is the supreme law. So, yun yung tinitignan ng governance. It's basically for the people. And in the first place, di ba, yung term na republic, di ba? From the term republic, we have res publica. The government was created for the public. So, those are two definitions. Now, to combine the term global and to apply it in our subject globalization, ito ngayon yung ibig sabihin ng global politics and global governance. When we talk about global politics, it's simply the interplay of power between and among nation states. 
So yung example ko kanina, di ba, we have Philippines and China. So ano yung desire ng Philippines? Basically, yung interest ng Filipino people. Ano yung desirability ng China? Siyempre yung interest ng uh, people ng China or some would say the party involved. It, it's arguable, no? But basically, nag i tayo, we are presenting our interest. It's either that one would now cooperate or one would now uh, go with the flow. Ano yung ibig kong sabihin nito, no? Uh, this is a diagram of your global politics. It's quite chaotic. It's a network. It's a system. So we have United States, Indonesia, etc. United States will basically need to interact with China, with Russia, etc. But that interaction is solely based on the interests of the United States. So pwedeng makikooperate sa China or even United Kingdom. But in the end, ang mananaig would now be the interests of the United States. Now, anong problema dito? Sometimes, interest would now clash with one another. At hindi minsan nare-reconcile yung clash na yun. At in a, fir- uh, in a worse consequence, tendency, kung hindi nila maayos yan, it could now lead into other consequences such as war, disputes, etc. Kaya yung global politics natin, guys, is basically chaotic. It's anarchic, magulo. This is disorganized. So, self-interest yung nangyayari dyan, no? Kaya we have this now term called your global governance. When we now talk about global governance, guys, may I just read? Global governance basically imposes that there is a need for an institution or superior entity or a governing authority that will now govern the interplay of power between and among nation states. So dito, yung pinakita ko kanina ng situation, magulo talaga yung relationships ng mga countries. And tendency, kung hindi nasolusyonan yan, it could now cause worse consequences, just like war, etc. Now, para maiwasan yung mga conflicts na yan, doon na po yung mga international organization. Ito ngayon yung sinasabi natin na institution or superior, superior entity. It's like a supra-government. Or actually, it's a supra-government. No? Ang role ng international organization is basically, basically to govern yung mga nation states natin. To reconcile any conflicts, to present yung agenda lahat ng ating mga bansa and try to uh, try to reconcile them. No? Yun yung function ng ating international organizations. Now, an example of your international organizations would now be United Nations, ASEAN, European Union, from your economic organizations such as APEC, OPEC, di ba? At marami pang iba, no? So, yun yung mga international organizations. But please take note, may put an emphasis. They now, these international organizations will attempt to govern. Bakit? Bakit may word na attempt? When we look into the future of your international organizations, your IOs are limited or demarcated to enforce authority. Hindi siya ganun ka self-executory or hindi ganun kalakas yung executory powers na no. Kasi for instance guys, no. Uh, let us look into the situation of the Philippines. Okay. Looking into international relations. Currently, medyo mainit tayo sa anong bansa? China, di ba? Because of the territorial disputes. Now, looking into territorial dispute, which is a feature of global politics, China and Philippines has claimed some territories on the South China Sea or we call it as the West Philippine Sea. No? So, bahala na. No? Uh, just trying to be neutral to makita natin. No? So, yung claim ng Philippines and both China will now be portions such as the Scarborough Shore and your Scarborough Shoal and your Spratly Islands. Now, yung basis ng China would now be the nine dash map. So, my historical basis yan, no? Then, the Philippines is, yung basis niya is quite legal. We have the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Seas, which is now embedded in your international organization. Now, ang nangyari dyan is they now, the Philippines, file a case against China sa Permanent Court of Arbitration or your PCA. Sila nag-handle ng territorial disputes, no? Then, I forgot what year, 2017 yata yan. So, please correct me if I'm wrong. Ang lumalabas dyan is that the ruling stated that walang karapatan yung China to establish or to set up their military bases. But the ruling doesn't even present, na sa atin doesn't even declare or conclude na sa atin talaga yung territory na yun. Pero lumalabas dyan, panalo na tayo. In the sense, we have the right to exploit those those territories kasi it's part of the freedom of navigation na nakasad sa kong close. Now, the ruling, linabas na yung ruling, bekot, bakit, bekot, bakit hanggang ngayon hindi pa natin ini-impose or ini-execute, no? Or why does any international organization does not execute? Kasi yun yung nature ng international organizations natin. Wala silang enforcing and authority. 
at kung may enforcing authority man yan, let's look into the composition of your IOs. For instance, United Nations, one executing body of your United Nations would now be your Security Council. And when you try to look into the Security Council of your United Nations, we have five permanent uh, Security Councils wherein we have United States, United Kingdom, France, Russia, and China. So you are giving a ruling then that country would now execute that ruling na against sa kanilang will. So tendency, hindi ganun ka-effective yung ating ruling. Hindi ganun ka-effective yung international organizations kasi yun yung nature. And it would now give us a certain issues or it gives us issues towards these international organizations or simply when we talk about global governance. Now, ideally, maganda naman yung objective or yung purpose ng ating international organizations. It's to govern the world para maging peaceful in order to avoid any world war again. Kung kayang idaan sa diplomasya, when we talk about diplomacy, usap muna bago gera, yun yung magandang objective ng ating international organizations. However, yung idealistic na yan, yung idealism behind it, it's quite hard to achieve. Why? First, it would now provide us a plurality, an issue all about plurality. Ano ibig sabihin ng plurality? There are conflicting rules. There are conflicting norms. Now, dito, nagko-conflict yung state sovereignty at international law. When we define state sovereignty, this is one element of, an, uh, of a state. Sovereignty, as defined, is simply the supreme power of the state. There are two types, however, may focus on the second type, no, which is now external or sinasabi natin na independence. Now, China doesn't have, or rather may define it first. External sovereignty refers to the freedom on the state of the state to carry its activities without subjection to or controlled by other state. But not just other state, but even external entities such as your international organizations. Now, tendency sasabihin ng United Nations na itigil mo yung pinaggagawa yan. Sasabihin ng China, wala kang karapan. This is our freedom to, to, this is our freedom, this is our sovereignty. Wala kang karapatan to dictate us. You're not respecting our sovereignty. Yun yung sasabihin ng China. Same as with the Philippines. Kaya diba we have President Duterte tries, trying to critic ICC. You don't have the right to critic my, my way of governance, for instance. Just, just an example, no? So, yun yung nakikita natin when it comes to state sovereignty. So, it challenges actually yung notion ng ating government. But also, yung, yung, yung purpose or yung, exactly, yung purpose ng ating international law, nagiging useless din siya. So, more likely, nagiging dyan is nagiging futile yung ating international governments. Now, actually, na-mention na ko dito yun. Two issues. Yung sinasabi ko kanina all about the Spratly Islands or yung ICC is the futility of international government. Nagiging useless siya. But also, in some instances, it now challenge or it targets yung state natin. The death of state sovereignty. So more likely lumalabas dyan na, uh, for instance, yung, yung nagiging useless na yung kapangyarihan, yung authority ng states. Uh, one example might be yung mga MNCs natin, no? yung mga multinational corporations natin. So, they are considered to be an international actor or an international element when it comes to global governance. Now, nangyayari dyan is sort of itong mga multinational companies natin such as McDonald's, for instance, example lang, uh, McDonald's would now be hindi na estado yung nagdidikta ng policies kundi yung mga companies natin ngayon. So nangyayari dyan, there's already been a question between state sovereignty as well. So yun, dalawang issue. Issue towards your international organizations, international authorities, and in the st same time, may issue then towards yung existence ng ating state, the power of the state, which is now sovereignty. So here are the references. Ginamit ko si Tamayo. So thank you guys.